This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Everyone cheering, super smiling. This message of unconditional love. Boys in the Air Force, super smiling. Here to save the day. Kindness is the way. We begin now. Hi, everybody. Megan Blake here, dog trainer and the pet lifestyle coach. And we are on a super smiley adventure where you come for pet information, inspiration, and integration of all things you can use to enhance your life with your pet. Our show here is named after my handsome spokes dog, Super Smiley, who will be with us always. A shelter dog who was abandoned three times on the streets of downtown Los Angeles. I first met Smiley at the Santa Monica shelter. And from the moment we locked eyes, he had my heart. He went on to inspire the world's first kindness program, teaching kids kindness through pets, the Super Smiley Project. We traveled the country speaking to thousands of kids about the lessons pets can teach us. He was a film actor, and he won a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Awareness Film Festival for his conscious work for kindness and for shelter pets. As for me, I'm the pet lifestyle coach. I integrate working with dogs as a dog trainer. But also my mission is to shine the light on their potential as healers and teachers. If we're open to them, they will guide us on amazing life adventures. How do dogs inspire us? And what can we do to repay them for all these amazing gifts that they give us? And our guest today is custom made and just perfect for this thinking and for this adventure. Now, we've all heard of Bissell vacuums, right? the home care brand with the world famous vacuum cleaners. In the Bissell ads, we often see cute dogs with their long hair (laughs) standing beside the vacuums. But what you may not know is that every one of these dogs is deeply important and embedded in the hearts of the Bissell family. They're not just dog models or props. They are the heart of the Bissell mission. And it all started a long, long time ago in 1876 with the Bissell brand. And now Kathy Bissell has founded the Bissell Pet Foundation, which has partnered with thousands of shelters and rescues across the United States and Canada. And it's awarded millions of dollars to pet welfare. I'm so thrilled to bring you a real life superhero for pets, Kathy Bissell. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) <laughs> and I want to share with everybody that Kathy, you were on our show a year ago, and it was one of the most poignant shows of all time, because it was Super Smiley's last show with us here on Earth. He passed very suddenly, literally, we walked with me around the block and an hour later, he was at the emergency vet. And Kathy, Everyone on our show here is an animal lover. Many are grand, even Academy Award winning celebrities and world renowned pet experts. But I honestly cannot name another guest who's done more for the shelter animals than you. So I feel it was meant to be that you were here with us for Smiley's last show. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, I was happy to get to meet Smiley and to get to meet you. And of course, he's changed a lot of people as well, right? With that smiling face and all that you do. Aw, thank you, Kathy. And like what you were just saying, I know you understand this profound bond that people have with animals. So can you talk about this bond for you in your life? And when did this connection start for you? Like, how did you come on this path of working for animals? Well, you know, I always love pets, um, much like you, you just you either love pets or you don't. And so I've always loved pets. And I came from a big family, actually. So I was the fourth child. And sometimes no one would listen to me. So I had my dogs. And I would (laughs) cry with my dogs, whatever you need to do, smile with your dogs, play with your dogs. So they were always, uh, you know, your best friends. And I always wanted to be a vet and that didn't work out for me. And so um, I feel like I came full circle, but in a better way, because I'm probably helping more animals now than I would have as a vet in a private practice. So things work out for a reason. And they're meant to be. They do, especially if you are open to your path. As I mentioned, being open to where our animals will lead us. And Kathy, like I said, you are just made for this theme. You knew you wanted to work with animals, but you were open. And my goodness, I don't think that being a vet, you could have directly helped millions and millions and millions of animals like you had. So so thank you so much for choosing this path. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. And Kathy, I just mentioned the big numbers surrounding you here, thousands of shelters, millions of dollars. So let's first start with the context. What is the Bissell Pet Foundation and how are you inspired to create this? So the Bissell Pet Foundation is here to support shelters 
and rescues across the country and beyond uh, in other countries. Uh, now we are expanding as we see need, but we're just here to support adoption, spay neuter, very importantly, uh, making sure every pet finds a home through microchipping. And then we're here also for emergency things like transport or there could be a, a shelter fire, whatever is needed. We are here and we're small and agile and that's what makes us different and I think strong. I love that you said small and agile because boy, you all are really effective. I mean, there is no doubt about that. I've looked at your pictures to see what you've been up to. And every picture you're with shelter dogs or you're at a rescue or you're in a hurricane, you're just doing everything. And you look like you are in love with every sweet dog there. It's like when we see your picture, it's literally like we're looking into your heart. So Kathy, tell us how do these dogs affect you either when you see them needing to be rescued or after they've been rehabbed and sent to their new homes. It has to be transformative. What do they do for you? It is totally transformative. I will tell you, I never expected to feel what I feel and be able to do what you do because you feel a certain way. That's what makes people change, right? That's what makes yeah. us all who we are. And I have not forgotten a pet that I've met along the way. I might forget mm -hmm. their names, but I don't forget their faces ever. And I know their stories and they're heartwarming. And you look at these pets and all you think about is, I'm going to change your life. I need to be here for you. I'm not going to forget you. I will be back. So you just have to go with kind of feeling that you can help make the difference for them and not give up and not forget and not live a life of perfect, you know, a, a perfect life and forget the, the need that's out there. Kathy, you just speak from your heart. I absolutely adore your way of looking at animals. It's like when I saw Smiley in the shelter, we locked eyes. I'd been looking for months for the perfect dog. I needed a very grounded dog to balance. My poor German Shepherd had been terribly, terribly traumatized. And she was so scared. We'd go into panic attacks. And I saw Smiley and our eyes locked. And it was literally, I said to him, are you my dog? And it's like, I heard him say, Yep. And there was no doubt. I didn't even take him out, pet him, nothing. I knew for a fact. And Kathy, you mentioned in, earlier in the show, just a few minutes ago, that when you were a little girl, you had this connection where you told your, your secrets to the pets. And psychologists have discovered that one of the reasons we mourn the loss of pets so deeply on a profound level is because we share our secret souls with pets. Could you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, it's true. We do share everything. When you can't talk to somebody that you need to talk to, you tell your pet and you cry with your pet. I mean, I don't know a true pet lover that doesn't get on the floor with their pets. Like right before this call, I have six dogs and I'm trying to make my way around the floor. <laughs> they all know I'm here for them, talking to them, telling them how tired I am, whatever it is. You know, the stories about what I've learned today. So, um, and how lucky they are to be in my house. So they just change us. They do, Kathy. I just adore you as a human and I love, I love and honor your work. And you create profoundly huge, super creative programs year round that we all can participate in, like empty the shelters, feed the shelters, spay neuter, massive spay neuter, flying pets to places where people are looking to adopt or just simply championing these beautiful shelter animals. And I want to touch on every one of these, but one of your best known programs is empty the shelters. Can you tell us about that one? Focus on that for a moment. Oh my gosh, that program has grown so much. So it started in 2016 and it's, it was starting small in West Michigan because there was a need. And then we went to Detroit, then we covered the state and then we grew across the country and we invite shelters to participate because it's expensive to pay for people's adoptions. But this last one was our all time high. We hit 15,000 pets in two weeks were adopted. That is huge. What? Wait, say it again. Not 1,500, y'all. She said 15,000, right? 15,000 cats and dogs found homes in two weeks before Christmas. And it was heartwarming because the families, you know, we always want to see pictures of the families. We want to see how engaged they are with the pets they're adopting. And let me tell you, the pictures that come in, you know, unfortunately, Instagram and Facebook don't let you put them all up because there were thousands that I wanted to post and I couldn't, but so wonderful, the feeling of knowing these pets found homes. So that event has really turned the corner and it, it just, it's everything. You adopt a pet, they're spayed and neutered, they're vaccinated, they're healthy, they're ready to go into a home and you know what their personality is. You're not getting a puppy that might change. You know the personality, you might get a puppy, but if you're going to a shelter, you know, you'll, you'll be able to tell what the personality is. So it's a fantastic event. 
I love this. I love this. And just learning about all that you do inspires me to be more creative and just to be more whatever I can do for the animals. And the Bissell Pet Foundation actually exists to assist animal welfare organizations, as you mentioned, and is currently partnered with over five thousand animal welfare organizations to do so many things like again feed the shelters tell us about feed the shelters oh so feed the shelters kicks off march 1st and it's really great we had cool. reaching out to us saying please can you help us please we need food and of course we don't store food so we decided to do a campaign to help feed animals and shelters and they apply if they need food and we reach out to the public and say for like twenty dollars we will match your twenty dollars and that'll be 292 meals for you know a shelter so you can really gauge the amount of food going out and it's been really successful we've fed so many animals and help so many communities and shelters, especially with COVID. I want to put that in perspective again for our listeners. If they were to donate, if they felt like it, um, $20, that actually turns into $40, which turns into almost 300 meals. Is that what you said? Yes. For $20. That's for $20. amazing. Yeah. That That's is, a big difference. Um, Yes. And that leads right to my next question. I wanted to ask, and you may not know this, but how many meals do you think, just guessing you might have provided over all these years? Can you even begin to estimate? If you can't, it's okay, but it's a lot. <laughs> I can't. Well, it's not as much as it could be because it's been only two years, but we were really fortunate because somebody heard about our program and they offered us $340,000 worth of food. And so that was pretty cool, right? All of a sudden it was like three hundred. $40,000 worth of dog food that was, you know, going to spoil in a couple months. But now the trick was logistically, how do you get that out? Right. Yeah. And yeah. of course the cost was enormous, but you know what? Think of the mouths we fed just with that alone. So we've been really fortunate. And of course, you know, a lot of the big brand names help support us. And, and then people just by giving 10, $20, that makes a big difference. That's massive. And I love that you literally, li literally put it to work. It goes right to the dogs. And right. I love that. And Kathy, I mentioned your pictures. I probably mentioned them several times here, but I want to encourage listeners like you've already have. I want to really encourage y'all go to Kathy's Facebook page, where again, you'll find these amazing stories about these beautiful shelter pets that resonate on such a deep heartfelt level. And also I see that the Bissell Pet Foundation, it seems like every day on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn as well. There's events and programs that you're doing for pets and everybody can participate. They can go, they can tell their friends, they can share it, they can donate, whatever. They can adopt a pet, be inspired. And I want to hear about some of these pets and stories from you, Kathy, right after this word from our awesome pet loving sponsors. Smiley, are you still with us? Good boy. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Everyone's here is super smiling. This message of unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the amazing Kathy Bissell, founder of the Bissell Pet Foundation. So Kathy, I mentioned your Facebook page before the break and everyone listening, I really, really, really mean this. <laughs> Kathy has such beautiful stories of these successes from shelters that they made happen. Like on the Bissell Pet Foundation's page on Facebook, I read so many cute profoundly life-changing and inspiring stories. And I have to say that I want to go get most of those little babies myself. Like, do you remember this one? Kathy Jackson, the cute little pit bull looking dog flying to his new home. He had this sweet little smile, like smiley. And I learned that all your pets always fly with a human companion. Tell us about the flying programs that you have. Well, just like Jackson. So Jackson had a seat on the plane. He did not like, so he got <laughs> 
<laughs> and he said, I want to be in first class. So he went up to where the person was on our team flying with all the animals and said, I'd rather sit in first class. And she <laughs> said, I think I have room next to you. So Jackson got to move in. But the whole time she was sending pictures saying, this dog is amazing. This dog is so unbelievable. Well, the funny thing is, when the dog arrived and it's either Foster picked the dog up, the, somebody in the car picked the dog up, this person posted on my site a picture of Jackson. He was not happy in the backseat of her car either. <laughs> so he put his head into her face and licked her the entire way when she was driving. I mean, what a sweet dog. I mean, how lucky is that? So these are dogs that, you know, were flying uh, to other places so they can be seen and be adopted. And once again, this is like the cutest dog on the planet. They're all the cutest dogs, but this one was just crazy cute. And he was abandoned. He was you know, thrown out. And you on your website, you say until everyone has a home and they're all so special. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I just keep saying thank you. Thank you. We love you so much. And you fly big groups of pets too. Like I read, you recently flew 93 cats and 95 dogs from Louisiana to Virginia for adoption. Tell us what it's like flying all these pets, the, um, the amount of organization. How do y'all do this? What's it like? So there is a lot of organization behind this, but it's really pretty cool because when you're dealing with different shelters, everybody comes forward with, they're the source shelter. They come with their pets. They're excited about these beautiful pets to finally find homes. So then they get loaded up, big deal, because you know you want to make sure in the summer they have water or ice chips or whatever. They have bedding, they have, you know, so they get on the plane, everybody loads them up and they're comfortable, except for Jackson. And then <laughs> um, they arrive on the other end to teams of people. Um, so they landed in Virginia, but these shelters were from all over. So it wasn't, they weren't just going to one place. They were going to multiple places to fill heart, you know, the hearts of many people. So it's pretty cool. Yes. And I love what you wrote one time. This is a quote. I want to read it for everyone here. And it's so simple, but it's so true. You said, this is a quote from Kathy Bissell. Are you looking for a great dog? Look no further than the shelter. They are waiting. They've been given up or tossed out, but they are waiting. Oh, I have chills. Can you just elaborate about that? I literally have chills. Well, it's true because people aren't looking at their shelter first. They need to look there. There are beautiful dogs. We're their only hope. You know, if we don't come for them, no one's coming. So you have to choose the shelter pet first because every type of dog you want. Well, and in Smiley's case, he actually picked you. He did. So, And we say that too. Like you think you're picking the dog. They've actually selected you. He locked your eyes and that was it. And that's what happens when you go to a shelter. You think you're going to go in to get a certain type of dog. <laughs> But then another dog picks you and then you're like, wait, where'd you come from? Okay, let's go home. So exactly. it's really cool how it works. And it works. If you're open, back to our theme here, if you are open to the dogs, open to that adventure, they will pick you and boom, you're on the path. Just like you, Kathy, you are going to be a veterinarian and look at you with saving millions and millions of animals. And oh, you mentioned partnering with organizations and things. You also, don't you work with the Petco Foundation for Spay and Neuter? Is that one of the ones you work with? Um, no, not for spay and neuter. Well, tell us about what you do with them. We're working with the Petco Foundation to vaccinate. Uh, ah, they have more great. Than vaccine program, and we are supporting that effort because we know that community pets need to be vaccinated because if they're healthy in the community and they end up in the shelter, they'll be healthy in the shelter. So it's really important that people get their pets vaccinated so that everybody has a healthy community. And I want to make sure I got it right because it started out not quite right, but is there, are they like vaccination clinics at the Petco's? Is that what it is? No, it's an outreach program to shelters across the country. There are a million vaccines that'll be given away in the month of March. And the shelters can open this up to their community and have people come in and get their pets vaccinated because you know, taking care of a pet's expensive. You have to be prepared yep. for that. And sometimes people just can't make it work. So this is an opportunity for them. Awesome. But you also do work with spay and neuter, right? So how do you work with that? How do you help with that? Oh my gosh. So spay and neuter has been explosive and needs to just keep exploding because there are so many pets being born. There are so many puppies. Just this week, we got a phone call from a shelter in Texas saying they had 100 two-month-old puppies. Could we come and help? No. Spay neuter is really important. This morning I got up and a shelter said to me, we just found nine puppies on the side of the road. People have no idea. Like if you're looking for a puppy, go no further than a shelter because there are puppies there and they need to be saved. They need to be brought into homes and loved and shown what love is and become perfect dogs. 
Right. Go no further than the shelter. And then when they're old enough, what? Get them spayed and neutered, right? <laughs> yeah, that's so important. Yeah. So it, important. If you can stay to your own pet, you will save hundreds of lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just multiplies exponentially, especially with kitty cats, right? I mean, the feral cats, it's just wild. So please spay, neuter, spay, neuter. And Kathy, you are doing a superhero job for animals. And there's always so much more. I mentioned being creative. And I saw that sometimes you even do amazing giveaways. Like people could win a Bissell spin wave cordless hard floor spin mop. Did I say that right? <laughs> you did. That's impressive. <laughs> Even I'm a tongue twister when I, I have to do commercials. It's very tough to say that. That was impressive. But yes, we do do fun giveaways. And part of that, we're trying to promote uh, people to, to know who we are so that we can continue sharing the message of adoption because that Absolutely. is an important message. Yep. However you get the message out there is good. And I do want to hear about some of your cool products too that Bissell has for pets. But And there are more things than just vacuums all right after this break. Smiley, you with us? Good boy. Molly, here's your dinner. <coughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, I'm Amanda Seifert, and I am on a Super Smiley adventure. Everyone here is Super Smiley. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the amazing Kathy Bissell, founder of the Bissell Pet Foundation. And Kathy, I want to hear all about your amazing products. But first, can't move away from the animals too soon. More about the dogs and the kitty cats. Back to the story on Facebook. Oh my gosh, I was looking. There was this little German shepherd puppy named Bella. Do you remember Bella? This little girl was so cute, little giant ears. And I promise you, if she had not been adopted, I would have left in the middle of the night, right that second and gone and gotten her. She, these animals are adorable. Adorable. So Bella is super cute, but do you know how many German shepherds we see and puppies? No, no I don't. Tell me. Huskies, German shepherds, any kind of breed you want. Mm. I mean, I just found four Labrador retrievers and luckily four of my friends wanted them. There are puppies, there are every breed you can imagine in the shelter. Today, it's different. There are purebred animals in the shelter. So lots of uh, Bellas out there. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because many times people, they'll say, no, I want a Husky. I want a German Shepherd. I really want a Greyhound, whatever it is. And they are in the shelters. And everybody, if you're having trouble in your area, finding a rescue that has that, go to the Bissell Pet Foundation because they're all over the country and the way they're flying them all around. I bet you could find a rescued breed that you want. And also that kind of goes, Kathy, I want you to talk about this, how people, certain breeds become popular and people will go buy that dog, not having a clue what it is. And that's why they end up in the shelter. So could you talk about choosing the right pet, please? Yeah, well, it's so important because some pets need a lot of exercise. Like you might get a herding dog. They want to be exercised. They want to work. Shepherds want to work. Belgian Malinois are very, very smart. All these dogs are in the shelter. Huskies, they are all in the shelter because they're more than most people understand. So even Labradors, I mean, big dogs want to run. So it's really okay to walk your dog around the block, but you need to find a place to exercise your dog. And it means throwing the ball and letting your dog, you know, I always say a uh, good dog is a exercise dog. <laughs> That's true. A good dog is a tired dog. In a good a tired way. dog. 
So <laughs> the only way you're going to get them tired is to get them out. And, um, and it's really, really important. People don't understand. You need to understand the breed you're bringing home. Yes, absolutely. And oh, there's so many dogs. I also saw a little special needs, a little Jack Russell Terrier. Nelja, is that how she says her name? Beautiful, white little dog. Let me describe you. It's a little black spot right in the front of her forehead, but she has four heart defects. And even with this, she found her perfect person. So there is a perfect pet for everyone. There is a perfect person for every pet. Do you agree with that, Kathy? Absolutely. So let me just tell you a quick story about that. The man that took that dog home, he happens to be a friend of mine. And he just had said to me, if you come across a Jack Russell, please let me know because I would like a Jack Russell. I said, oh, we see Jack Russells all the time. Oh, well, find me one. Then I look on Facebook and he's brought this dog home two days later. Oh, my God. He said, well, this dog needed me. I saw this dog and this dog needed me. I can afford to take care of this poor baby and provide the best life possible. So that's what happens. And that, you know what? That changes your soul. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it changes your soul. You become a different person when you bring in a pet that needs you. Because, you know, we're all nurturing in some way and it, it just changes us as people and makes us better with every step. Kathy, you said that so well. While you're telling this story, I was thinking, oh, I've got to say something to sum this up. But you did it. It changes your soul. That is the perfect way when you take in a pet that needs you. That is perfectly suited for you. Once again, there's a perfect person for every pet, a perfect pet for every person. And Kathy, I also saw that you support work with pets in schools. I read the Michigan Wealthy Elementary School recently did a program using some of your dogs and the kids were reading to the dogs. And it reminded me of Smiley's work. He was in school all the time as the ambassador of kindness, teaching kindness through pets. Can you talk a little bit about your work with schools and teaching kids about adoption and well, it was so cute. We don't do that often, but the, the kids got together and they they all pitched their own charities and they're in fourth uh -huh. grade and Bissell Pet Foundation won. The boy that got the most hands <laughs> up. So um, we went and we talked about adoption and what the foundation does, which is so great because all these kids, I brought two of my dogs into the classroom and they were in love and they wanted to make them the mascots. And then the teacher said, what else can we do? And I said, let's go read at the shelter. Because yeah. Once you go to a shelter, you realize you can love a shelter pet just as much as you can love a pet that you're buying. So please choose the shelter pet first. And so yes. this is a way to teach children to make sure they go to the shelter because they're going to meet those dogs. And how do you decide not to take that dog home? I think their parents weren't very happy with me because I heard a lot of the kids went home saying, mom, you have to go back <laughs> That's so cute. That's so cute. Well, I just wanted to second you is what I was going to say. Every one of my animals have always, always, always been rescued. I mean, super smiley, national spokes dog for kindness, my beautiful horse, Starfire, my little miniature horse, Mini Haha, all my kitty cats, Too Sweet the Travel Kitty was on Animal Attractions TV with me. I'm just saying, and all, if they just sit on the sofa and watch TV, they're your therapy dog. So right. I agree. I agree. Oh, I remember Amy Gilbreth, too. I love, I adore her. She went one time I was interviewing her and I asked, um, why should we adopt a pet? And she just said, adopted pets are the best pets. And I remember she, <laughs> I will never forget the way she said that. But Kathy, back to you here. You not only support shelters and rescues and move better pets to better places, but sometimes you go on to properties where animals have been abandoned or neglected or the hurricane work where they're drowning. Could you tell us a little bit more about some of this kind of work? Because this is a whole different animal, right? It's a whole different animal. And so I don't do all that personally. Sometimes we get yeah. called to help with those cases, mm -hmm. but I have been where there have been puppy mill cases. And mm -hmm. literally, um, it is quite sad to see so many animals that have not been taken care of. I and mean, people don't understand these animals are not taken care of. They may be given food, but there's no love. There's no affection, but they have cute babies and they take those babies away immediately and they give them. So it's, it's tough. It's tough to see that. It takes a piece of you when you see that. It's, it's really not. Not easy to No, but the good news is that, that there's being more awareness about that. There's more awareness about adopting, more awareness about trying to not get a dog from a puppy mill and unless they're rescued because the mothers and fathers, they're not 
socialize properly. They're kind of insane. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way to the dog. They've been kept in a cage. So if you can go to the shelter and get a dog that's been vetted or worked with a foster, that is always, always, always your best fit bet. So, but thank you for sharing that glimpse into that reality. So we all, we all have a big context as to what's, what's going on. And now Kathy, tell us about some of the Bissell products. Let's talk about this. They make our lives better, our pets better, our home better. So tell us, what is your favorite? Tell us. So, okay. Well, I have a couple favorites, but I will tell you if I didn't have them with six dogs, I probably would be divorced. <laughs> uh, for sure. Luckily, we don't want that. <laughs> but so just the other morning I woke up, I had a senior dog and she has accidents all the time. And of yeah. course, like, oh no. And and the woman that works for me said, oh my gosh, it's a big mess. And I would say, I I'll take care of it. And honestly, I took out, we have a um, Revolution 2X deep cleaner. And I took that out and just vacuumed over it, cleaned it, and it was gone. So, I mean, products wow. do work. It's easy and great. But my go-to product as a daily, probably five times, is the Crosswave. Because it mops and vacuums at the same time. You can go to, from floor to carpet. And dog hair comes up, muddy paws, food that's on the floor. It doesn't matter. And it's good for kids, too. Wow. And say the name of that again. It's called the Crosswave Pet Pro. It's Crosswave amazing. Crosswave Pet Pro. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And um, I've got the pet hair eraser and the bark bath. So I can personally vouch for those. And it's getting to be spring, getting to be a little cooler. I got a German Shepherd um, last year. She's a sweet girl, but we all know anybody who has a German Shepherd knows where I'm going. They're fur balls, fur balls. So um, I'm going to do a cute video for you with the bark bath when it gets a little bit warmer. I can't wait to do that. I'm going to have to send you the Crossway Pet Pro, and Ooh. then you can do a video with that because you will die. It is <laughs> thank you. I accept. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I love your work. Biggest fan in the whole world. And I feel like I could talk to you all day, but I just have one more question for you. I know animals are healers and teachers. I've learned different things from all of my pets, and I know you feel exactly the same way. So what have these beautiful pets taught you? What have you learned about life? They've taught me. Well, that's a good question, but they've, they've taught me how to, how to love and to how to love other breeds, not just the black labs that I used to have, that I can open my heart up to all breeds and that it's really the dog itself or the cat. It's not, you know, the, the ones that might be vicious, it's because they were trained to be that way, but their souls are, are genuine and they're sweet and kind. And there isn't one that I look at that I don't want to bring home. And so they've made me a better person and they've taught me how to love more. Beautiful. I love that, Kathy. And that is so true. So true. I second everything you just said, dear, beautiful superwoman, Kathy Bissell. Thank you again for your kind words about Smiley, for honoring him by making a donation, his name to the Bissell Pet Foundation. Thank you for joining us and for all you've done for pets. Thank you so much, Kathy Bissell. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And everybody, feel free to reach out to me at Pet Life Radio or through my website at MeganBlakeOfficial.com or at WeBeginNow.com. You can find everything I'm doing, my YouTube dog training videos, all social media, and you can really learn a lot of super helpful dog training tips on my dog training videos and my YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash MeganBlake. And we can meet in person, yeah, for a dog training session over Zoom. My Zoom classes, as y'all know, have been covered by Spectrum News and CBS, and we've gotten really great results all across the country. Finally, big shout out and thank you to our super producer, Mark Winter, for our show here and for our fabulous bumper music he composed and performs. It's all about sharing kindness with Super Smiley. And to everybody who loves their pets, thank you all for joining us on a Super Smiley adventure. And remember, we begin now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.